start with what do you think is going on with Palestine? Well, this is the day after the invasion, the ground invasion. I was with Dennis Bernstein at Flashpoints last night, and uh, Norrell Burroughs Friedman is headed over there. She's uh, probably one of the main reporters who works on Palestine. She taught herself Arabic and can interview people all over, so it's probably one of the best programs, Flashpoints through Pacifica on what's going on in Palestine and the, and the various issues that's out there. Um, you know, they're, they're quite adamant that first it was the Israelis who broke the truce. So, you know, they actually bombed um, and killed six Hamas soldiers on uh, November 6th. So the rocket attacks were in retaliation for that. And the talking points that are on all the major media and, and NPR and, 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 and public television too are, you know, that Israel is responding to these rocket attacks. Well, already the deaths are 400 to 1, Palestinians dead. We've, we have a whole chapter on Hamas and the history of Hamas and how it's been biased and co not covered Can in the censored 2009 book. Can you hold that up just a little bit? So it's uh, this year's media, you know, top news stories not covered by the corporate media. But there's a whole, we did a whole research on, on how AP and how the major media covers, has covered Hamas historically, um, particularly the last two years. Hamas was, you know, the democratically elected government for Palestine. Right. and totally undermined by both Israel and the U.S. You said something on um, the radio show about how um, because of the war on terror, uh, they were able to freeze the assets. Um, Hamas was democratically all of, all of elected yeah. and then we just took away their money. We completely closed globally. Um, they couldn't do banking. And all the money, any money that they had or was due to them was frozen. So the government was not functioning. And then the blockade in Gaza has had led to tremendous misery, daily deaths because of lack of medical supplies and, and, and food. Half the children are anemic. And, um, you know, so when they're resisting, then they're defined as terrorists. You know, you've got literally a, a prison camp with a million and a half people in it. Um, and they can't get out. No, they can't get out. I mean, and people can't get in, really. The, Cynthia McKinney was on the boat uh, three days ago that tried to take supplies in, and they were rammed by a Israeli ship in the middle of the night. And, and they were shot was, at, I understand, too. They were shot at, or at least in the water around them. Mm -hmm. I saw Cynthia's report. Um, and they ended up going to Lebanon um, because the boat was damaged. So, um, no, supplies can't get in. Um, they're completely surrounded, and now they've been invaded and they're being bombed. You know, I, I have uh, a question regarding Hamas and the media and what we hear. Uh, you know, the media, since, uh, with Project Center, it's obvious the media isn't telling us everything. And there, so it, the trust, of the, uh, my trust in the media is is pretty low. When we hear that Hamas shot rockets at Israel citizens, it just doesn't make sense to me. It just doesn't. I don't. What could they possibly benefit from that? Yet we're being told that, and all our, our only evidence is that we're being told that that's what happened. How do we know? Why would Hamas do it if they're not really well, they'd benefiting been a, from it? There's been a six-month ceasefire. And Hamas, the only way they can strike back at Israel for the bombings and the attacks and the starvation is, uh, is, is these rockets and or suicide bombings. Um, somebody straps a vest on and goes out and, and blows themselves up. I mean, they're, they're powerless. They're, they're dealing with the fourth largest military in the world, mostly which is financed by the United States. So they're a powerless people. Um, you resist in, in whatever ways you can. Um, and but militarily, you're you're just gonna get you're get, gonna get beat up. The yeah, it just seems like I'm a fob. It seems like with all the the any suicide bombings and rockets, it, they, it's never worked. Uh, Hamas is. I don't think they're stupid. Why would they keep doing this if that's really what they're doing? Why would they keep doing it if it's not working? I just have a hard time. I don't have. Well, Hamas has actually agreed to a two-state solution. Um, when Carter was over there six nine months ago now. 
uh, he met with Hamas leaders, and he was totally denigrated in the United States and the U.S. media for doing that. Um, and it was quite clear that you know they're open to the negotiation, they're open to discussion. They're not declaring they're going to wipe Israel off the face of the uh, of the earth. And um, you know, and that that keep they keep saying that they're being supported by Iran. And that Ahmadinejad had said that he never said that. It was a mistranslation. Yeah, he said that the the uh, the regime, meaning you can say yes, like yes, the Bush partly. regime, will be um, washed from the pages of history. Mm -hmm. that he said. So it had nothing to do. It had more to do with with historical progress and their critique of this of you know elements of that Zionist regime. Correct. Correct. Right. That's One point I wanted to bring up, and I think that um, Bruno um, sort of touched on this. Um, the Mossad's uh, motto is. Um, uh, by way of deception, we wage war. By way of deception, we make war. Um, how, why should I believe that people are really going in and blowing themselves up? I mean, how? Why? Why wouldn't that be just another hijacker in my mind? Knowing how false flag works, knowing how that that kind of thing works. How do I know that they aren't just patsies for the Mossad? I think we always ask the question, who wins, who gains from events, and who loses. Um, certainly, false flag attacks occur. Um, some are orchestrated by governments. And whether Mossad or U.S. or any other nation does that, we have certainly long historical records that those sorts of things have happened. Um, so, you can't be sure without knowing the family or the person and who was involved and, and what their decisions were. I mean, it's a very, it seems like it's a very convoluted relationship in terms of Israeli intelligence with Hamas, actually. And because, it, and that's what I wanted to ask you about, and too, what, what you perceive is what's going on in terms of the media um, battle between Hamas and even Fatah and the PLO. Because if you go back, like, I think it was late 80s when there was Shin Bet, actually, uh, most of Shin Bet thought that they wanted to help catalyze the development, uh, fund, protect the the people who helped start Hamas because they thought it could be set up as a counter gang yeah. against uh, Fatah. The Israelis originally funded Hamas as a counter to, to the so PLO. It's like the uh, LCIA of, exactly. of yeah. Mossad. Yeah. And so yeah. who knows, I mean, and, and it's interesting that, that the relationship of the actual sort of the intelligence organizations themselves to the or their their that what they're trying to create as their counter is very uh, nebulous. It seems like well, what you end up with in the media is talking points created by public relation firms that will try to picture play it a, a good versus bad scenario, and that's the the pablum that we get in. It's really propaganda. It's really top-down propaganda that we get in, inside of corporate media.